I wanted to talk a little bit about ranges in Vim and show you some cool things that you can do with them that you may not know about. I know when I was starting out using Vim about two years ago, one of the things that was really confusing to me as a beginner was this whole first type, colon, then percent, then s, then slash, then what you want to find, then what you want to replace. And I was just thinking to myself, like, how am I going to remember colon percent s slash? Like, it's just the most random uh, bunch of characters ever, right? I mean, two years later, I understand why it's done this way, and it makes a lot of sense. But as a beginner, it's just like, why is there a percent there? Why is there an s there? Uh, another thing that might happen is when you when you use a visual select and then you hit colon you know that that's going to operate I, I mean I knew early on that that's going to operate on the lines that I've selected but I didn't understand what this whole business here with the greater than less than signs was um, so one other thing when you hit three or any number and then colon it fills in all this mess and you're thinking okay what's going on here so I just want to explain a little bit how ranges work and it's really not too complicated after you uh, take a look at the help for it it's all they're all listed right here um, so a number is an absolute line number so that's why when I type let's go down to the file below if I type a colon and then hit 4 it will go to line 4 or if I hit colon and then 2 it'll go to line 2 so kinda makes sense um, or dollar sign will go to the last line in the file likewise and regardless of whether I use a command or not um, it will go to the last member of a range so if I'm at the top of the file and I hit colon percent it'll still go to the end of the file because that's the end of that range the range is from the very beginning to the very end and you'll see in the top here it says that percent is equal to one comma dollar sign so we already learned that no, a number is an absolute line number and dollar sign is the last line in a file well a comma just separates a range it's saying from line one to the end of the file so that's what that means marks are not really used probably as much uh, just depending on your familiarity with them but if you set a mark which you can you can do with M like if I set M A that's gonna set a mark called A at the position where I'm at so then if I go elsewhere in the file and then I hit um, back tick A it'll jump me right back to where I was if I go elsewhere in the file and I hit single quote A then it will take me to the first non-blank character on the line where my A mark is set and that's what it's telling us here is that that colon I'm sorry the single quote mark that works in normal mode as we already said as we already showed it's not gonna work in this because I'm not in the correct file um, but that single quote and then the mark will also work for a range so let's go back down here I still have my A mark set wait for those keys to clear if I hit colon and then I say I want everything from A to the end of the file and why don't you print that out for me and it's going to show me lines 2, 3, and 4 there at the bottom you might be curious also to know why does the print command exist? You know, it doesn't really make much sense because you can already see the lines. Isn't that redundant? Well, it's actually kind of a remnant from earlier text editors like ED that that where you couldn't see the text in front of you and you needed the print command to be able to look at the text. Um, probably one that's already obvious to you is that dot means the current line and you'll see that these are kind of similar to regex um, definitions where dot means a single character and dollar sign means the end of the line while in ranges dot means the current line and dollar sign means the last line 
Um, this is where it kind of gets, I guess, a little bit more fancy, but still really useful. You can actually include a search pattern into a range. So if I hit colon, and then I say I want everything from where the word violet appears to the end of the file, and print that for me. Then it'll do lines two, three, and four. Or if I, I can go backwards, let's say I'm on the last line here, and I do question mark, go, uh, oh, I first need to hit colon, and I say everything from the word blue um, to line number three, print it. Oops. Blue, line number three, print it. There you go. You have to use. You do have to use the ending. Uh, the reason you have to in, use the ending uh, forward slash or question mark is so that you can, so that it knows where the pattern is finishing. Um, these are, are kind of convenience for if you just searched for something recently. Like say I searched for the word red. Let's wait for this to clear. So if I search for the word red and then I decide later I'm down here at the bottom of the file but I want the lines between red and ranges then I can do backs backslash forward slash for the last search term and then do ranges like this and say print it that'll give me roses are red, violets are blue, vim uses ranges and it's the exact same thing for a question mark and then the slash uh, backslash and is where the previously used substitute pattern matches. So if I had a pattern that I had used to substitute, let's give an example here. Let's say I use percent %s, which percent means the whole file, and s means substitute, and I say r and change it for b. Actually, let's just do line 1, change r to b. and then I want everything from the last substitute pattern to line number three and print it and it's going to give me R and blue because R was the last substitute uh, that I last thing that I substituted for I'm curious I don't think this will work but I feel like it should nope that does not work so that feature is not there so let's explain then what this whole visual thing means because it never told us about these less than and greater than uh, things. Well what these are they're actually marks. Um, you can search help for these and it says the first character of the last visually selected area and likewise the last character of the last visually selected area so it just makes sense it's the area that you're visually selecting it's from the first line of it to the last line of it so that's why it's entering entering that range automatically um, because it's doing from the first line of the visual area to the last line of the visual area so let's say I visually select something and I I don't know I make it uppercase and then I go to the last line of the file and I'm doing some other stuff and I want to get back to that um, range that I had previously well you know that you could use GV to reselect the last visually selected range um, and then I can hit colon to operate on it from there but if you want to save one keystroke, which if you're crazy about Vim, maybe you do, you can actually do a, instead of having to type colon and then uh, type out this whole less than, greater than business, you can just type colon asterisk. So if I do colon asterisk print, it'll show me the last visually selected area. So it's just, that's just shorthand for this. They're the same. And then finally, let's talk about prepending a number. So <clears throat> I'll let this, these keys clear here. And I showed you earlier, if I do three colon, then it'll give you this crazy thing right here. 
So let's dissect this. Dot means the line I'm currently on, which is line number one, to the line I'm currently on, plus two lines. So all in all, I'm getting three lines. So I didn't mention this, but this whole dot, dot plus, let's say three in this instance, and then hit P will give me all four lines. You can use plus or minus on any member of a range. So let's say I do, okay, I want from roses, but one line up to said, and one line down, and then print that. It only gives me the two lines in the middle. So, did you catch all that? <laughs> I know that's a lot, but that's pretty much all there is to ranges. Uh, one thing that's kind of interesting, as I mentioned earlier, if I was to open this in the ancient text editor from the 70s written by Ken Thompson, one of the creators of the C programming language and founders of Unix, he wrote this program ED, which Vim is a descendant of, and you can s and, and it is a direct descendant of SED, which is a commonly used streamline editor on the bash command line. If I use ed to edit this, um, first it's going to tell me how many bytes it is, because that's how old school this is. But you see I see no text here. There's absolutely no text displayed. That's a, that is where VI gets its name from. It was called visual because you can see the text. It's visual and you can interact with the text visually. Whereas ED, um, any anytime you want to see what's written in the file, you have to use that P command. So if I hit P and hit enter, it's going to show me the line that I'm currently on, which happens to be the last name the last line, but I can use these ranges that we've already learned, like percent %p, to display the entire file. So that's where all this comes from, and you can also use the same ranges in, in said. So let's say, for example, I cat poem and I send it over to said, and I want to know what's on lines 2 and 3, right? Well, you can actually use, let's say, line 2 to 3p. And it shows me, I mean, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> it prints those lines twice. And the reason for that is said by default prints out the whole file. But it has a special option called dash n that will suppress that. So if I do cat poem and then do said and then do use the dash n to suppress printing, then I can specify this range and see only lines two or three of this file. You can also use this to make set kind of operate like grep, um, where I can just uh, use, uh, let's say for example, I'm going to use G. That I'm going to spell out the word grep here, right? So G stands for the global command. And then for my rejects, I'm going to use RE which are the letters RE and then I'm going to use the print command on any lines that have that rejects. What did I do here? Okay, well let's just to prove a point that this is where grep gets its name from. <laughs> this shows me um, this shows me all the uh, lines where RE is present. I think to do it in said, let's see. I'm pretty sure I can do it like this. Yeah. So you just leave out the, the G to select that. But anyways, if you didn't know, that's where kind of the history behind VI and Vim and their ancestors and also grep all kind of come from these ranges. And once you get familiar with them, they're really powerful. Um, if they you know, if they become muscle memory, then it, they save a lot of time. And there's a lot of commands in Vim that that are made a lot more useful when you know how to use these branches effectively. Because pretty much every command there is, for example, the M command, and look at all these commands that take a range at the beginning. If you can learn how to do these ranges, you can use all of these commands so much more effectively. So. I hope you learned something, and I might be doing more little short tutorials like this instead of the let's read the Vim help 
just because it's hard to condense full pages and it's kind of like trying to teach the whole Vim editor in eight minutes and I'm just not sure I can do that or have time to do that and I find these kind of little short snippets more interesting so we'll see how this goes. Cheers.